Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, we're staying inside and I'm going to be making celebrity chef Marcus Samuelson's wild, wild wing recipe. Let's get going. So I saw Marcus preparing this on television and instantly I wanted to do it. There's some really cool flavors going on. And I actually think a lot of this, the flavors that I'm going to be using will easily translate into outdoor cooking into a lot of the barbecue and grilling type stuff that we do. So we're going to start off with a sauce. I have here one tablespoon of unsalted butter. To that I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of minced garlic. One tablespoon minced ginger. Get it softened up a little bit. Garlic's getting that translucent look to it now. We're going to add one cup of Cholula hot sauce. Now I'm going to add one tablespoon of just regular old white granulated sugar. Bring up the heat a little bit. Start stirring this. All right, I'm going to move this over to the stove behind me, let it simmer a little bit, and we'll get on to the next step of this recipe. All right, now we're going to make Marcus's chicken shake, and this is a seasoning blend that he apparently shakes onto everything at his restaurant, The Red Rooster. We're going to start off with one quarter cup berbere. I think that's how it's pronounced. Let me show you this. Berbere. I got this online, it was very easy to find. I'll have a link down below. This stuff, it's an Ethiopian spice blend, and it's got some fantastic stuff. I think this will go good with just barbecue. It's got paprika, garam marsala, salt, cardamom, cinnamon, cumin, ginger, hot curry, onion, black pepper, allspice, ground anise, garlic, whole anise, cayenne pepper, coriander, toasted cumin seeds. I mean, it's got a lot of cool stuff in here. One quarter cup smoked hot paprika, two tablespoons white pepper, two tablespoons celery salt, one and a half teaspoons granulated garlic, one and a half teaspoons coarsely ground kosher salt, two tablespoons ground cumin. And I'm just going to put the lid on this cheap plastic container, give it a good shake. All right, let's bread those chicken wings. All right, in my breading mix here, I have one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of cornstarch, one quarter cup of cornmeal, and about three tablespoons of chipotle powder. Good stuff. For the wings, I have three pounds of wings, and I brine these overnight. Marcus brines his wings. It's a very, very simple, the traditional, you know, salt and sugar with water, brine. I'll have the proportions listed down below with all the other ingredients and everything. So simple stuff, just get these things breaded. Okay, now we're going to allow these wings to just set for about 10 minutes. Marcus likes to allow the breading to become kind of wet or gooey on the outside of the chicken before they hit the oil. Okay, we're using peanut oil. It's preheated right now to about, you know, 360 degrees or so. Now in the oil, I have a whole bulb of garlic and a whole sprig of rosemary. We're seasoning the oil. It's been in there ever since I started preheating the oil. And we are actually going to be using a little of that oil to season up the sauce a little bit more, just to add something to the sauce, kind of like you would with the butter on buffalo wings. Let's get the frying. All right, about seven minutes or so, and check it out. We're going to let this drain just a little bit. All right, let's get these into the bowl. So 
So here's that sauce that we made. Put that right here. Now, as I said, this oil has been seasoned with a whole bulb of garlic and rosemary. So we're going to take some of that seasoned oil, which is very hot, and we're going to put it into this sauce here. You can hear it sizzling when it hits. Again, when you think about traditional buffalo wings, they got all that butter in there. So we have seasoned peanut oil. And if you have peanut allergies or whatever, I'm sure you could use just a canola oil or something. Wow. Now it's a lot more shiny than it was too. It's pretty. Get kind of few flips. All right, looking good. Let's get these plated up. All right, we have a cast iron skillet. We're going to be plating these in. He uses a small Dutch oven, which I think is pretty cool. Now that chicken shake that we made, this stuff is awesome. I'm going to be serving it with some blue cheese dressing here. A little bit of the chicken shake on top of that. Let's dive in. These look really, really good. Well, first off, I was expecting a lot of heat. I mean, like maybe an uncomfortable amount of heat. But it's a very, very pleasant kind of just mouth warming heat. I mean, the lips are a little warm back in the throat, but it's not crazy hot. And the, the you know, the blue cheese obviously helps with that. But without the blue cheese, let me give this a go here. Mmm. Yeah. Really good. Really good. I mean, it has kind of a, I guess like an herby kind of a buffalo wing thing going on here. Really good, wow. Mm. So I'm thinking this chicken shake would make an insane rub for pork ribs. And I'm even thinking maybe smoke the pork ribs a little bit, hit them with this breading. Again, that breading is a really good idea. That little bit of cornmeal in there and that cornstarch along with the flour just makes for a really nice crispy bite. Deep fry the ribs. I don't know if I have something to dip it in, but it'd be good. <laughs> anyway, guys, give this a try. I'll have the recipe down below and uh, links, you know, for the ingredients that I need. Actually, it was only the one that slaughter the name Berber, Berber, Berbray, Berbray. I see that being used a lot in my future because it has a lot of ingredients that go well with the traditional like American barbecue. Anyway, thank you guys for stopping by. Marcus, thanks for this insanely good recipe. I appreciate it. See you in the next video. It's a stone. Double IPA. Cheers.